This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and in this video, we'll do a showdown between two ways to calculate circuit matching range, and in particular, decide whether or not the new feature, INVZ or inverse Z, is a worthwhile addition to SimSmith or is something that probably we won't use very much. And I intend to do it with a couple examples, and you can draw your conclusions when you're done, and I will draw mine. Hopefully, you enjoy the video. One of the very cool features of SimSmith that doesn't exist in very many other programs is the ability to solve for what impedance range a certain network might match, a variable network that would be. Now, all, Sim, all Smith chart type programs will take an impedance, say 30 ohms, and this is just a low pass L network, and match it to a 100 ohm generator. There's, no, there's nothing special about that. Now, in the early days of SimSmith, before we thought about this very much, I could take these values and I could sweep them. So let's sweep the values here, and I'm going to sweep them over a fairly narrow range, but... And I have to turn sweeping on. Let's, let's, leave, let's do both. We'll show the, we'll show the path for, this, for the nominal point here, and we'll show three points in both dimensions, three points in both dimensions. And one thing I might notice here, you might make notice of, is if I do these as linear, we see that the points are not centered here. By making them logarithmic, since I, since SimSmith does these as a certain amount of percentage above and below the nominal value that's determined by the value having the min-max ratio here, if you want one of the points to line up, you need to use an odd number of points here and you need to have them logarithmically, logarithmically spaced. That's not really that terribly important, but if you want it to line up with one point, you need to do that. So, what does this, what does this actually indicate right here? This is the area that 30 ohms could, would match to, but that's never the problem we want to solve. Well, I shouldn't say never. It's, not, it's generally not the problem we want to solve. What we want to solve is what range of impedances over here will match to the known generator impedance of the 100 ohms here. So, in the old scheme of, of doing things, I would take this, and the first thing I would do to that, um, it's easier just to bring up one that I've done it with. So, the first thing I would do, and the old one's in the background here, the first thing I would do is I would take the circuit and I would reverse its direction. So we see the circuit's direction is reversed. The component values all become negative. So well, however many components are in here, I completely reverse the entire circuit. I make all the component values negative. Then I reverse the generator and the load impedances. And then I make sure when I sweep, I sweep with negative values down here. And when I do that, I see this. Plot. Make that one smaller, put the other one back again. So, here was the old case where we showed a 30 ohm load matching to some range of generator impedances. Here we show what range of load impedances centered again on 30 ohms would match to the generator impedance up here, which is 100 ohms. And this was the point I had tried to make in the uh, two videos ago, video number 56, when it was on the Smith chart and nothing but the Smith chart, the importance of having what you're working with be somewhere in the middle of the Smith chart and not way off to the side. In this case, the difference between 30 ohms and 100 ohms isn't that great, and you could work with it over here just fine if you wanted to. But with the way I originally had done this, with the negative components and, and such, um, I got, this, got the center point lined up just exactly where you wanted it to be, because... SimSmith, in those days, would center the Smith chart on Z0. So, that now is what we will call the old way of doing it. And the old way had one other problem, too, and that was the fact that we had a slight power gain here. If we turn the circuit around, the original circuit had, was a circuit that had loss in it. If we turn the components and make them negative, all these components have a slight amount of gain now. So, we see a slight amount of gain here. 
And if we want to, we could invert this value. Uh, if the gain's not much different and get the right value, you could do it in dB. And you could say, well, this has got 0.3 dB of gain. Well, going the other direction would have 0.3 dB of loss. It's a little bit annoying because it's not really correct. So now let's go and do it the new way. And the new way is considerably simpler than, than the old way was. And in a lot of ways, it's, it's much better. Just again, start with the 30 ohm load, the same low pass network. Again, we're trying to match to a 100 ohm generator. And let me get rid of this just for a moment. And this was my original complaint about how this worked. But I could plot, instead of plotting G, which was down here, which gave me the range of generator impedances that could be matched to a 30 ohm load, I used the I and, let me just change the color of that. I can have them both on. The blue, the blue boxes here represent the range of impedances at the generator that can be matched with a 30 ohm load. The red matches the range of load impedances that could match to a 100 ohm generator. The red is the most is the more likely way you would want to analyze a circuit. You know the generator impedance, it's not, it's not wildly vari variable. The load is wildly variable. In this case, I didn't sweep these components very much, so the range of impedances that this circuit can match is pretty small, but I'm doing it to show, to show the point. So this matches now exactly what the old way did, except, and this was the reason why I didn't particularly like it or, or mention it initially, was the fact that I didn't like that there was no way to move this back to the center. And the reason I couldn't move it back to the center because the generator stayed over here. So some new features were added to SimSmith, which made SimSmith really, really um, flexible. And one of them, and I, I'll do a video on the, the, these, these parameters, but one of them is a parameter called Z Center. We can just not change anything at all in our circuit, plot exactly the, all the same points, but we can just change the center point of the circuit. By doing this, we end up with exactly the same circuit we had and same plot as we had doing the old way, but now we don't need to redraw the circuit. We don't need to convert all these numbers to negative values. So let's recap what we just did. There are two ways to solve this problem. And the old way of doing it, which I have called negative component value reverse circuit method, and those are my words, was the only way to do it in previous versions of SimSmith. SimSmith always calculated impedance from left to right, and to be able to get, it from, get the calculation done starting at the generator going back towards the load to see what value of impedances the load could be to match to the generator, we had to undo the effects of the components, which made the values negative. And this is exactly how a person would do this manually. We drew a circuit normally with the load on the left, the generator on the right. We redrew the circuit, reversing all the components. When I say redraw the circuit, I mean every single component. Uh, if there's 12 components in there, they all get reversed. The order of them, they all become negative, and then we swap the load in the generator. We negate the value of all the components except the load in the generator. They still stay the same. And then we plot G dot Z, or just G down here um, in the plot window. And we get the matching range of the network to the generator impedance, which is what we were trying to do. The Smith chart will automatically be centered at the nominal load impedance because by switching the load and the generator impedances around, the Z naught now is the old load impedance, and Sim Smith makes the nominal makes Z naught the nominal load impedance. So that's that's a plus one for this this way of doing things. The circuit shows power gain, like three tenths of a dB of gain in the circuit, and we had to invert it or negated or whatever you want to call it to get it right. And this is a little bit of a pain and re redrawing the circuit and reversing everything is a, bit, a little bit of a pain too. And in current, in the new version, and this was not true in just six, version 16.3, but 16.3 is the first version to work in a manner that I feel really good about endorsing it. And we have this function called the INVZ function, inver inverse Z function. So we draw the circuit normally including all the components we wanted to sweep. We set the sweep ranges up and everything. And then all we do is just plot L dot inverse Z. Now, L, 
L is the it does not have to be the last component in the circuit, but it's it's the it's the component in the circuit where everything to the left of this is considered to be the load. That could be a couple components. Usually, it'll be the last component in the circuit, but it could be more than one. But it's everything to the left of of that point that we are going to that we are going to call the load. We plot that directly, and we get the matching range automatically. So big plus one for this way. If the generator and the load nominal impedances are not equal, we have to center the Smith chart. And we saw that because it's important that the Smith chart be centered on the load impedance. Not so much when the differences between the load and the generator impedance are small, but in the case of like a tube amplifier, which might have a two or 3,000 ohm generator impedance and a 50 ohm output impedance, you end up being way on the left-hand side of the Smith chart in a tiny little range. And as I showed in the video, uh, 56, which was the Smith chart, nothing but, you get distortion of the points and stuff as you get further away from the center of the Smith chart. And your ability to look at that and see whether or not the varying component values would give you something that would be sensitive or, or be pretty smooth to tune. So you really want to move the center point to the nominal load impedance. And we couldn't do that before, and that was my objection. However, version 16.3 adds a, a parameter called Z center, and we can set Z center to the center point, and we're done. And the circuit shows the, the, the loss correctly. Ver, the version 16 enhances both methods because we can use some of these features for the old method. But in reality, this is, it's so much nicer to draw one circuit, not redraw it, negated, and it's this is just a this this with the with the Z Sen parameter is a much superior way of going, and that's all we had to do. Just add that. If we if you if we had not had this at all, we would have had it offset. And for tube amplifier, if this was twenty five hundred ohms or two thousand three thousand ohms or whatever, this point would be would be right over here. Now, granted, we could zoom into that, but there's distortion. So. I won't keep beating this, um, beating this up. What I would like to do though, very quickly is do one more example. With the addition of the z -sen parameter, we no longer need to have the center of the Smith chart be resistive, and we no longer need to have a generator be a resistive generator impedance. They can both be complex. So here's a case where it's a slightly different set of values, but I matched a nominal load impedance of 30 plus J5 to a generator whose impedance was set such that it, it would produce its maximum power into 100 minus J20. That means the generator impedance is actually 100 plus J20, but we'll get to that in the next video. This generator is specified right here at the point where it produces its maximum power. So that's what we want to match to. This circuit does exactly that. And we can sweep the circuit by looking at the L dot inverse Z. We can center it the Smith chart around this, the nominal load impedance out here. This is a complex number. This can be complex. We couldn't do this before. So this is something new. Now, most people don't do this. Most of the time, this will be centered resistively. Most of the time, this will be centered on a resistive line also. Um, but you can do it. You can set it to be, to be offset. It's pretty typical that the generator impedance is not perfectly resistive on output. Um, that's pretty pretty much true of all generators. And if you want to tweak on that, usually we just ignore it. The load, it's hard to say. You could easily be driving something that was nominally pretty capacitive or nominally pretty inductive. And you, and you could include that if you wanted to, to center, this, to center the Smith chart. But again, we're going down the road of making SimSmith more and more flexible. If a user does not feel comfortable doing this kind of stuff, don't do it. The, the outcome of having this centered at, at just 30 ohms isn't that big of a deal. You're still pretty, pretty close to being centered. It's not that much of a deal. And if you didn't include this properly, it's not, not the end of the world either. Uh, if this is very, very close to being right, let's see what the power drops if we just put 100 ohms in here. And the reason I'm capable of doing it is I have that on manual. So we lost three-tenths of a dB by ignoring the, the generator impedance. This is not a big deal, but SimSmith gives us the ability now to do things more accurately if we want to, and it gives us an incredible amount of flexibility. 
And I hope um, if you take nothing away from this video other than other than that one thing, and that is the flexibility of SimSmith is really, it's quite impressive. Hope everyone's enjoyed the video, and there will be more.